I'm Dr. Rebecca Cooper and welcome to this series of videos about COVID. This video we're going to be discussing treatments at home, what you should do, what you should take and how you should monitor yourself. So the mainstay of treatments at home um, for pain and fever is Panado paracetamol, one gram, four times a day. So it's about six hours apart and yes, that helps with pain and fever. Um, it was thought that um, things like Voltaren and Brufen should not be used in COVID. It has since been shown that they are safe. However, Panado is the preferred um, medication for pain, fever, inflammation. So Panado, one gram, four times a day. The other medications are really anti-inflammatory vitamins. Um, so vitamin C, 500 milligrams twice a day. Vitamin D, 5,000 international units once a day or 50,000 international units once a week. Depends on which formulation you can get. And zinc, 75 milligrams a day. Zinc might be difficult to get in that concentration as it's usually used in 10 or 20 milligrams for people who and they have diarrhea. But zinc, 75 milligrams. These are the four medications that really are the mainstay of treatment of COVID. None of them target the virus itself. We don't have a medication currently that targets the virus itself. Each of those are symptomatic management. So as, long, as far as symptomatic management goes, the other things that you can do is if you are coughing a lot and your chest is sore and feeling dry, hot water with honey and lemon can really ease the chest and soothe. Um, steaming is something that many people who are short of breath, they steam um, as you would if you had bronchitis or asthma. Um, and what it does is that it doesn't actually kill the virus, but symptomatically makes you feel better. Um, and so everything that you do at home is just to really improve your symptoms. It is very important, particularly if you are asthmatic. Um, generally, if you're asthmatic, you will be used to when you're getting sick, you take a short course of steroids. With COVID, the timing of steroids is very, very, very important. So please do not start yourself on steroids at home. Do not take steroids unless prescribed by a doctor. Um, and then with antibiotics, COVID is a virus, therefore antibiotics will not work against the coronavirus. We give antibiotics in certain situations if we think that there is the possibility of a secondary bacterial infection, but antibiotics do not treat coronavirus. So please do not start antibiotics um, by yourself. Steroids and antibiotics should only be started um, by a doctor. Again, if you generally have lung problems, if you're asthmatic or you have COPD, you'll be used to nebulizing yourself when you feel short of breath. With COVID, it's controversial whether or not you should nebulize because it can aerosolize the virus and put others at risk. So don't just nebulize yourself. Please discuss with your doctor whether or not you should nebulize. So really the main treatments, as we said, are Panado, vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc. Um, and plenty of rest and fluids. Two big things that you need to monitor if you are at home is your temperature. Um, so take your temperature in the morning and the evening, write down what the temperature is and what you're looking for is your trend. So if your temperature is always 36.4, 36.4, 36.4 and suddenly it's 37.1, although 37.1 is not generally considered to be a fever, it has increased from what yours normally is. So we want to keep an eye on your personal specific trend. The other thing that is very important to monitor is your oxygen saturation. This is a pulse oximeter and they are becoming very popular because many people are discussing how important they are. They are very important and if you have COVID, it's really recommended that you have one. Um, you can get them at most, at most pharmacies now. Please make sure that you're getting a good quality one and that you know how it works. So you put it on your finger. Please note, if you have dull fingernails or fake fingernails or acrylic, this will not be accurate. Um, because what it does is it uses an infrared light and it reads the oxygen saturation. It's important also that you know how to read what this is saying. 
So this is upside down because it's not meant designed to be read by you. It's designed to be read by the person looking at it. So it needs to be that way around. On this machine, the pulse is at the top. So at the, at the moment, my pulse is 78. Um, underneath, there's a little heart and it says PR. That's the pulse. And then the number underneath that, that 97, and these little lines are going up and down. Those are going up as my heart is beating. Um, and it says percent SpO2. That's your oxygen saturation. So at the moment, mine is 98. That number needs to be above 94. And if it is dropping consistently below 94, or if it is staying high, but in order for this to stay high, your pulse has to go up, or you have to breathe faster, then you need to go to hospital. If this number, this 98, drops below 90, you need to go straight to the hospital. If it's between 93 and 94, sorry, between 90 and 94, um, if it starts to come up, that's fine. If it's consistently low, or as I said, your heart is beating faster, or you are breathing more in order to keep the oxygen up, you need to go to the hospital. One of the things with COVID is that people have a very low oxygen saturation without realizing it. So you are sitting talking to someone and I check your sats and they are actually in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, which is where you don't realize. Generally, you can feel that you're out of breath or that you're, you have low oxygen. So that's why this machine is very important. If you can buy one or borrow one, um, but keep an eye on it and if you're not sure how to read it you're not sure what it says please speak to your doctor or your pharmacist um, a nurse friend just to make sure that you are reading this correctly and that's one of the most important things that you can do at home um, to monitor when you need hospital or if you're doing all right